I mean, it was inspiring that you shared that with the audience. I don't want any fake drama about my life. But we're talking about something that we have never talked about before. Sometimes we just cry about it. Sometimes there's nothing to say. And I didn't know that was going to happen. I just started filming. Hello and welcome back to The Love Sea. I'm Lawrence B. Hamilton. And I'm Cameron Hamilton. And today is a very, very special episode. We're talking about something that we have never talked about before, which is fertility and our fertility journey. Yes. The number one question that we are always asked is, when are you going to have a baby? That's right. Now, this conversation is not the easiest for me, I'll be honest. I like to share a lot of things, but this is one that's still kind of tough, but I feel like it's so important to talk about it so that you can see yourself in the conversation that we're about to have. How do you think our fertility journeys affected us as a couple? Um, I think it's affected us as a couple because it has made us feel more connected. Yeah. I think um, we support each other. Um, we're more in tune now, yeah. I feel like, in marriage or any type of relationship when you go through something that's big and heavy or you know weighs on your hearts it creates a bond yeah um and i think that it's actually made us stronger i would agree i would say that when i saw what you were going through in terms of taking the medications doing the daily shots knowing that ivf and all this stuff wasn't really something that you naturally wanted to do but you did it for me. You showed me a new level of love that I don't you start that I'd never seen before. Thank you, baby. We have some amazing guests for you here today. You may know them from Love and Hip Hop Miami season four. Together, they're a force to be reckoned with, and they are individually as well. Sheila is the founder of the Curly Curvy Conscious Movement. She leads the Unruly Retreats, and she has written a new book called Unruly as well. It's all about women empowerment, specifically for black women. Now, Ace is a platinum recording artist with soulful, impactful lyrics. Together, they make an amazing power couple. And they're also going through their very own fertility journey, their life journey, all the above, and they're our friends. So let's get into this conversation. Enjoy. Welcome, Sheila Marie Aces. Hey. Thank you now, for having I, I, us. Yes. Now let us start by saying by these are our real friends. <laughs> real. Okay? Yes. These real are life. our people. So let's start with Unruly, yes. Sheila. We need it. Unruly, <laughs> your amazing book, A Guide to Reclaiming Your True Self. So uh, in this book, you talk about the philosophy of being unruly. You said women can do it all. You can be mom, you could be spiritual, you could be sexy, you could be fun. So, you know, women always get put into these spaces where you said mm -hmm. it feels like they have to leave a part of themselves behind. I thought that was really powerful. So talk to us about that. Yes, I think unruly, you know, I'm in the self-development space and I feel like we're all exhausted with self-development in a certain way, mm -hmm. where it's like always telling you to do one more thing. Add one more thing to your morning routine. You just need to lose five pounds and then you'll yeah. be, you know, just need to get this a six figure earner. You just need to do this. And it's like, I kind of wanted to counteract that messaging. I wanted to just let women know that you can evolve, but you can only evolve from a place of loving exactly where you are. Yes. So unruly is about not being different than you are, but rediscovering all the parts of you that you left behind, all the versions of yourself that you threw in the trash because you said, oh, I don't like her. She brings me shame. She embarrasses me. She's not good enough. Mm -hmm. I'm not that. I'm not that. It's just about rediscovering all the missing pieces to make yourself whole, period, full stop. Period. I think one thing that really stuck out about the book to me was you talk about being both honest with yourself but also being compassionate with yourself. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it might be difficult for some people to strike that balance of mm -hmm. being truly honest with who they are, but at the same time being compassionate, forgiving themselves for mistakes. Can you talk a little bit about like, how do you walk that line and how do you achieve that? I'm an Aries, okay? We, we're <laughs> fire. And sometimes I feel like a big mistake I made in my past is assuming that honesty has to always be harsh yeah mm. and it doesn't honest 
honesty can still be kind. Yeah. It can still be compassionate. And when it comes to your self-talk, if you're working through something, I just imagine it like if you're climbing a mountain. If you're climbing a mountain and, and someone's behind you going, oh, why did you put that foot there? That was a dumb move. Oh, wow, wow, really? That's how you feel like you're going to climb a mountain? Oh, like how hard is it going to be for you? Yeah. We're all climbing metaphorical mountains. It's like you can do hard things, you can push yourself, but be kind to yourself in the process because we're all doing the best we can. I love that because those inner voices. Girl. Yeah. They'll tell you things that's not true. They'll lie to you, say stuff one way, say, you know. So that's that's definitely a good point. A big and on, on the contrary, if you're giving yourself like that positive self-talk, like you can do the same thing positively, right, and, and put yourself into that positive mental space. Especially now where I feel like there's so much dialogue about accountability. Like that's such a buzzword, especially for black women. Like I feel if I go on – TikTok, if I go on YouTube, anything I, I read now is going to mention, well, you know, black women need to take accountability. Mm -hmm. You need to take accountability. Women need to take accountability. And mm -hmm. it's like, ah! I actually <laughs> think women already overtake accountability. Say that. That's how we're conditioned from when we're young. But you can take account. First of all, accountability as a conversation is like, what does that even look like with people I don't know, strangers on the Internet? Mm. How, how am I even going to do that? You can't take accountability with people you're not in mm. community with. Clock it. Mm -hmm. But, Say that. <laughs> but Say that. I think accountability can also be soft. I feel yeah. like there's this misconception that all these things have to be very harsh and very regimented mm -hmm. and things you can move forward, women. We can move forward. We can use all that feminine goddess energy that we have and that softness and that kindness to move us forward. It can also be powerful and move us towards our goals. I love that. And that's really a lot about what your unruly retreats are yes. about. Yes. <laughs> so talk to us about that as well. Yeah, so we're having our next unruly retreat October 24th to the 27th. We're going to be in This Ain't Texas. Hey. hey. Ain't no hold em. Hey. Beyonce, girl. <laughs> Baby. Beyonce going to be there? Well, I called her, but in she spirit, was going to come. In spirit, right? In and spirit. I was like, girl, don't even waste her time. I know you busy. She, she got 50 <laughs> okay. children. So mm -hmm. I was like, that's okay. But we're going to be in Texas. <laughs> and the Unruly Retreat is a safe space for black women. I think that a lot of black women, oops, sorry. My community had expressed to me over time, like, Sheila, we really want a space for us. It was right around 2020, or it was right around actually when the George Floyd murder happened. Mm -hmm. And all of our women were like, you know what, I wanna be, where are the spaces of healing where I can go and I don't have to deal with microaggressions. Mm -hmm. I don't have to deal with someone negating my experience, mm -hmm. questioning my experience, challenging my experience. All of those little mm -hmm. things are like tick, tick, tick to our self-esteem and our confidence. And it really doesn't give us a safe space to heal. So Unruly Retreat is a safe space for black women to heal. But it's also not precious. Like, I know for me, when I was starting my healing journey, I was like, number one, I wanted to find where are the spaces. I felt like all the spaces were led by white voices. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, where are the spaces led by women who look like me? And where can I come as I am? I feel a lot of these spaces are very... Uh, precious and as they should it's precious but it just feels like I gotta be meditating and I, I can't eat no meat and I can't drink and I can't do this and, and unruly is just like girl come as you are and we're gonna work with what we have here man we actually just did an episode uh, a couple of days ago and it was talking about meeting people where they're at you know yes. if you really love something and you want to see them grow start start with where they are yes you know? yeah I so agree that's very powerful that's what very are really some of the most amazing tra uh, transformations that you've seen with the women that have come to your retreat? Wow, so many. Literally, someone yeah, just <laughs> yeah. someone oh, just DM'd me yesterday. I know, so come on, support. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm so proud of her, her man. Yeah. That's awesome. The That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, someone just DM'd me the other day and was like, Sheila, I, I don't know what I posted on my story, girl. You never know what I'm going to post on my story, child. It's a chaotic event. Happy yeah. for the ride. Right. But uh, I was just talking about something, and she was like, Sheila, you ch that retreat changed my life. Mm -hmm. It opened my mind up. The thing about Unruly is we foster a non-judgmental space. Primarily, that's my main goal. Mm -hmm. I want black women to walk into an experience where they're not going to be judged. When is the last time you walked to, into a room and you weren't judged based on what you had on your hair, uh, what kind of clothes you got, your nails, or what you said, or performing respectability mm -hmm. politics? None of that. Mm -hmm. And so just the idea that black women can be free in their bodies, can be free with a group of women, and, and explore, say things that they might have 
think will inspire shame, but then there's no shame. Mm. Say things that they have never said in a group before without judgment. And the whole group is just like, hey, we're supporting everybody. We all have something. That I feel like it's almost like it changes them. They leave change. They're like uh, some women that have come to Unruly, they didn't know each other, now are like godmothers of each other's children. Oh, People have, community. they went to Renaissance together. Mm -hmm. Like they go off and create community without me. And I think that's what I'm most proud of that Unruly is not just about me. I'm not like your guru, you're, you know, you're not gonna come. I want you to leave with tools that you can take to make your life better and connect with other women that can support you on that journey. Yes. That's beautiful. And Ace, I wanted to ask you, I know that you're also someone who's very in touch with personal growth, um, just bettering yourself. I noticed when I was watching the show that y'all were on that you mentioned that <laughs> as a lyricist, you've really grown over these years since you first started. Yes. Um, how have like the recent years impacted your lyrics? Um, very good question, man. Uh, from a growth stamp, uh, standpoint, you know, perspective, you know, yeah. um, being able to like live a life, you know, go through so many things, you know, to kind of speak about those things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, um, my journey as a husband, my journey as, you know, my spiritual journey uh, t towards myself. I think uh, all of those elements of myself allow me to be more vulnerable and more in touch with who I am. You see what I'm yeah. saying? As a mm -hmm. person. And uh, in return, it allowed me to put that into music. So for me, uh, having human experiences is important to me, you know, um, you know, and not so much leading from my ego. Yeah. You know, and I just think that uh, that's the journey that I've been on in terms of a, from from a growth perspective. You yeah. know, it's like mm -hmm. how I've, you know, uh, healed through these things. You see what I'm saying? And like, mm -hmm. but also the pain, identifying the pain that I felt, the shame that I felt, the frustration that I felt. Uh, and showing people like how I was able to overcome that as a man, um, you know, whether it's growing up without a father, like taking some of those things that um, that kind of were, were, were notches against me and kind of allowed those to become strengths and powerful things for me, you know, mm -hmm. like strength and being vulnerable and being open and honest and authentic, right, and in, and, and in tune with yourself. And to me, this music is more refreshing. So I just think that uh, putting that portion of myself into the music is very important. That's oh, yeah. that's powerful. And we saw that on the show. I mean, you really were strong in your vulnerability. You talked about things that people are not always comfortable talking about. I mean, you talk about setting boundaries with your mom. You mm -hmm. talk about the fact that when you grew up, uh, you weren't taught to express your emotions and right. you're yeah. having these very real conversations with each other. I thought it was a beautiful thing. I think it's an example that a lot of men need to see, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. you know, because I mean? we, we don't see it enough. We you don't know what I mean like I didn't see it at all growing up. You know, I grew up in a community that was very much like you need to be hard in order to survive in this environment. You know, so I, I had this exterior where for me, I was more compelled to uh, my anger more than anything. I was mm -hmm. fast to anger and my frustration yeah. because of where I came from, because of where I felt like I lacked, because I felt like I had to struggle so much. But there was never a man that came through. It's like. That, that it's okay for you to be emotional, it's okay for you to cry. It's okay that, you know, like, you know, and, or, or even if it's sometimes coming through and, and giving, giving that person a hug or whatever it might yeah. be, you know, yeah, that your, your, your feelings are relevant, you know, because I grew up in an environment where it was chaotic in my household, even though I love my, my mother. Yeah. Uh, it was a very, very chaotic household, very, you know, verbal abusive space sometimes. And I just think for me, it kind of, it, it minimized uh, me being able to vocally, you know, project what I felt emotionally. Mm -hmm. There was really no home for my emotions and how I felt. So I just felt like growing up in such a heart and community and then choosing rap, you know, I had to kind of look at those things and, and, and really identify why I chose at that time. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Reestablishing that relationship. So uh, even for me, it's now becoming that, that same thing I think that I wanted for myself or others, you know, is uh, that, that figure that say, man, it's okay to cry. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's okay to hurt. Um, you know, and allowing yourself to feel these things, right? Yeah. But not stay there, but being able to move through those things as well. Yeah. So I think ultimately that's what I'm also telling the men in my life or the men who are just compelled to my message is that like feel what you feel, right? Stay in tune with those deeper emotions because it makes you more fuller, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So mm -hmm. now I can imagine of like deep level layers of love because before I wasn't able to access that. 
I think that's that's so Can beautifully just, sad. Hey, yeah, that just yeah, that, that was be sad. That was lyrical. Yeah, yeah. No, one of the th- <laughs> one of the things of this show is the fact that being vulnerable is powerful. It's right. easy to throw up a shield. It's yeah. easy to run away and right. not express those emotions. But if you can put yourself out there to your partner, to your friends, mm-hmm. and be like, "Look, this is me." Mm-hmm. I mean. We, you're giving that person a weapon that they can use against you or that they can protect you with. And, yes. and mm-hmm. you know, you, yes. can, you can fight together against all the other forces in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I really liked what you said when you said that Sheila was the first woman who challenged you mm-hmm. in life. So Sheila, I wanted yeah. to turn that back to you <laughs> yeah. and ask how has Ace challenged you in a way wow. that's helped you grow? Wow, he challenges me in so many ways. Yeah. I would say the the first way that comes to mind is as I said, I'm an Aries and I know like I don't take it and make it my whole personality, but I am classic Aries in the sense that I like to move quickly. Mm-hmm. Um I literally am always thinking I should have done that already. I should have done that already. Like I got to move. We got to do this, we got to do this, we got to do this. And he challenges me sometimes to be present. Yeah. Cuz his pacing is very much like they got love about Twan, um, Ace. I'm oh, sorry, I was used to calling you Twan. Okay. Ace. It's his, all good, whatever you it's all mean. It's all me. They got love about him. Is he's not moved by the world. Like, he is so grounded. Like, I imagine him like a tree with roots, like a big tree that has roots, like, really far into the ground. Like, he's not swayed by trends, by what's hot now. Like, what... Like, he'll just watch it and go, okay. Sometimes I'm like, I'm like, but wait, wait, that's a trend. Let's hop on it. Let's go. Yeah. You know? And I feel like he challenges me to be grounded okay. and, like, steady and still. Yeah. I'm going to go with astrology again here. He's a Taurus, so they're okay. a bull. So I just imagine a bull before they charge. Like, they sit, they look. They assess their target and then they go forward Mm -hmm. versus me where sometimes I'm like a bull in a china shop. So (laughs) I think that's the best thing. One thing I learned from him is like is like it's good to move at my pace. My pacing is great, but there may be times where it's good to just take a moment and get grounded before I make a decision or move. Absolutely. That's beautiful. Now, both of you guys have your own platforms. You're both doing your own thing, but you're still one entity. So how do you support each other when you have your own separate things going on and then we have to come together to be married? Like, it's I, I actually want to ask you this, too. Oh. <laughs> you first. Your friend. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to answer this or you go first? Oh, you answer first. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's actually the beauty of our relationship. Mm-hmm. And I think it makes our relationship very healthy mm-hmm. because we, I mean, as you guys know, too, same yeah. thing. We work for ourselves. Yeah. So yeah. that could mean we're working from home a lot. His studio is at the house. My yeah. office where I do my work and my recording and stuff is at the house. So, you know, there could be days where we're around each other all, all day. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's so healthy for us to have this separation of our careers. Yeah. Like he goes off and does his thing. I go off and do my thing. We trust each other enough to make our own respective decisions. Mm-hmm. But if they're at sometimes I, with Unruly, I say, oh, babe, I know you're not a woman, but here, what you think about how this sound? Like sometimes I'll run yeah. things by him. He'll run things by me. But what do I know about rap? <laughs> what do I know? Please. Uh, like, every time he asks me, I say, please don't ask me because I'm the worst person because I will listen to like, I, I'm not even going to yeah. quote anything, but I, I just listen to very basic stuff or else I'm listening to movie soundtracks. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, so in between. Has right. she helped you yeah, with some yeah. of your lyrics? Yeah. She you know, okay. like, like oh, Queen you know, is very good. We did EMDR or we did uh-huh. the... Where well, I was doing the affirmations. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. right. Oh, she's been a part of like okay. a few of my projects or whatever. Like okay. she's done yeah. and spoke like some affirmations or whatever because yeah, I felt like um, it was important I felt like for men who maybe haven't heard that to hear that. You see what I'm saying? Because I think that's uh, such a gift for me to have from my wife as somebody that can uh, pour into me in that way. You see what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So I mm-hmm. feel like it's it's such a superpower. I'm like, yeah, y'all get a little Cheers. bit of that. Like, yeah. look at this, bro. This is so <laughs> lit type of thing. Uh, but yeah, to kind of speak to, 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 did I answer that question? Yeah. Or, yeah. Or, 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 yeah. Not yet. Okay, so yeah. to speak to your point, uh, to, to that question you guys asked is, um, you know, we kind of do, we we do the similar things. We kind of do similar things in our like in in in, in our respective fields. If mm-hmm. That makes sense. That's like yeah. you know, uh, Queen pushes more towards like women and that healing, and mm-hmm. I'm really on a spectrum of the men and that mm-hmm. healing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we we there's always a point to where we can meet and kind of bounce ideas and kind of see like 
uh, where she is or where I am or just like kind of what we're dealing with. And this right here actually helps our work. You see what I'm saying? Like it makes it more authentic, you know? So like remembering times of her, like having those maybe moments where, uh, you know, those days didn't go as she wanted to on those writing days. And we were able to kind of have conversations mm -hmm. and have breakthroughs. And then you kind of take what you've learned from there and kind of reapply it. And it's been the same thing with me, with her in terms of opening, allowing her in my space of like, oh, oh, this is a very male dominated field. Yeah. Uh, which now that I'm more in tune with my emotions, yeah. thanks to the exercise in and of my wife, now I get to bring that emotional aspect, that seat in my own yeah. words, in my yes. own words, right? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You get to bring that emotional that emotional aspect to it, get allow, allow me to tap into that more. Yeah. So to me, that's what she brings me more of. It's like, cause I can be logical in a root, but she helps me to tap in more of that emotional field of myself. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so that's the, that's the yeah. air. So I bring that emotional oh, part now yeah. of like, oh, so this is the balance of the masculine and the feminine yeah. that I try to make balance of in my life. And uh, it's, it's work, it's magic. I mean, it's, it's such a yeah. amazing thing when you have that sort of yin and yang moment between mm -hmm. the masculine and the feminine energy. Yes, sir. Like you never want to just shut out one of those energies completely, right? And I know a lot of people maybe feel jaded because they've had bad experiences with men or women, but there's, I mean, there's something that we can all learn from each other when it comes mm -hmm. to those masculine and femi feminine energies. 100%. Mm -hmm. Come on. 100 Absolutely. I hope y'all are paying attention <laughs> at home, okay? Because it's gems being dropped for everybody, men, women, however you identify. Yes. <laughs> everybody. Yeah, <laughs> everybody. So, Ace, I wanted to ask you, um, Kim kind of mentioned this earlier, uh, why you guys did have your time in reality TV. Um, <laughs> Mm. Yep, I know, yep, I know. Yep. Reality TV is something. We're just, we're not going to talk about a whole bunch. We're talking about a little bit. Yeah. Um, but as he mentioned, there was a scene where you really got vulnerable about the relationship with your mom. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you approach that conversation? And what advice would you give to other people who are also dealing with those kind of family dynamics? Uh huh. Well, you know, I wanted to make sure that I was, like, that I expressed myself, right? And that I addressed, uh, like, where I felt in ways where, where my mom maybe didn't show up for me, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Or, or yeah. who I wasn't allowed to be in those spaces. Uh, but I also knew that I wanted to get that across, but I knew I didn't want to harm or hurt. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think that was the first thing that I had to recognize was that I want this to be a loving conversation. I mm -hmm. want this to be uh, from my heart and I want it to be honest. So to me, that was the that's like kind of the foundation of it for me to speak open and honest. And I also knew at the same time of how I grew up. So I knew that there would be pushback because it's it's just natural. You know, my mom really, or my family haven't really went through some of those stages that it kind of takes to kind of, you know what I'm saying? To kind of heal yourself. So mm -hmm. I knew there would be like some pushback, but I knew for me, it was important for me to be uh, courageous in that moment for myself, yeah. uh, you know, for all the times that I couldn't be, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And I just think that uh, that was like, Lil Ace kind of speaking in that moment, you know, who kind of came to the forefront wow. and was just honest as like, man, I was hurt by that, you know what I'm saying? And like, uh, regardless of what your your intention was at that particular moment or, or the fact that you did the very best that you can do as a mother, I appreciate all of that. Yeah. Uh, I was still hurt and it still damaged me as a man, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Uh, so I just think for me, I wanted to just make it clear in that moment and uh, for anybody else who, who's willing to have that conversation, I think it's just, to first self-reflect, you know what I mean, with the intention of what you want, but also kind of check, uh, you know, take accountability for maybe how you show up in some of these things, you mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? And like uh, how you maybe enabled this person in some way or just whatever it might be, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, but it's important to push yourself first. I think that's the main key uh, and be able to speak open and honest and to know that there's nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? You're not wrong or you're not disrespectful for being honest about what it is that you feel. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so yeah. 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 I mean, that's, it's really not an easy feat to talk to your parents and set boundaries with them. Yeah. And I think what you said was so important that it's true that both things, both things can be true where you love your parents, you, you appreciate what they did for you. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, there were some maybe traumatic things that happened. I know, I think that's inevitable for all families. It, it, mm -hmm. it happens with the, our parents. Now, the thing that really stuck out to me watching this show was 
how constantly vulnerable both of you were, how brave you were to talk about all these different topics. Of course, one of the biggest topics was your fertility journey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was inspiring that you shared that with the audience. What inspired you to, to actually open up about that on the show? Well, one of the things, the agreements that we made were like, okay, we're going to st step into the reality TV space. That's something that we've been adamant about not going into for a long time. If yeah. we are, mm -hmm. we're going to be honest. Yeah. Like we agreed, like, I don't want any preconceived storylines. I don't want any fake drama about my life. Like I'm, I'm coming with my real self because mm -hmm. to me, I thought that would just, that would only make sense for me. Yeah. And so when I started filming, I didn't know that was going to happen. I just started mm -hmm. filming and then found out I was pregnant right like shortly after we started filming yeah. and then found out I miscarried while we were filming. Wow. So I was like, all right, I guess I'm going to share this. I just decided to share it. Yeah, it was definitely <laughs> ghetto. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sharing that shit. Yeah. Oh, I was like, I well, wow. Imagine. I mean, just to be in that environment and, you know, we're going through our own fertility journey yeah. as well, which we're now opening up about. And we felt like you all were the perfect Kudos. Yes, friends and couples to have here to join in us yeah. opening and talking yeah. about it because it's still a little sensitive for me. So, yeah, you know. there's it so is. much shame. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I think about all the messaging, they, they, you know, going through a fertility journey, like I literally never thought mm -hmm. I would be going through this. Like, yeah. absolutely not. Like, I'm certain if you would have asked me a few years ago, I just knew I would be able to meditate and mm -hmm. goddess energy my way right to a baby as soon as I right. want it. And like, I, I'm eating mm -hmm. the things, I'm doing the work now, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Like, obviously there's no way. And so, when it doesn't happen, it's like a whole world shifting moment for a woman mm. because the messaging that we receive from when we're very young is that being a mother makes you whole. Mm. That's a part of your whole so journey. True. That's a part of what makes you a woman. Mm. So then what am I if I can't do that? Right. Like, you know, these are the questions that go through your mind. So for me, I've just taken this as an opportunity to, again, reclaim. Unruly is all about reclaiming. Is to reclaim any lost parts of myself that I, that has gone away through this process. I don't know about you, but mm -hmm. when I first had my first miscarriage, I definitely felt like it, it took a toll on my self-confidence. Absolutely. Like, I started to be like, dang, like. Yeah. Is it me? Like, what yeah. did I do Am I the jar? Am I being punished? Like yeah. that too. It's a whole mental and then went through coaster. anger. Like oh, I, I yeah. think I went through so much anger. I was mad at myself going through. And I noticed too. It's mm -hmm. funny. Even though it takes two people to make a baby, mm -hmm. yeah. I find that when something goes wrong and the path isn't as easy as you expected, I feel like a majority of the pressure falls on the woman. Yeah. Like it's usually you. Then oh, what did I eat before? Right. What did I do before? Am I getting enough sleep and my da 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 is there something I need I need to go to acupuncture I need to I need to mm. and you it could just feel very isolating and feel very much like there's something wrong with you mm -hmm. and yes I feel that it's a, it's a it's a slippery slope yeah absolutely I mean like you said it can feel really isolating so Ace how do you how have you supported your wife through these times because you know men go through their own things too you know yeah, we go yeah. through yeah. it but men yeah. also experience sure. the same loss the same grief the same yeah. Hurt and frustration. Yeah, you know what's interesting? Uh, if I can be honest, man, like when we went through it with the show, uh, I wasn't as supportive as, as I should have been, mm -hmm. you know, in that moment with her um, because I was caught up in my own things, you know, um, and I just think the pressures of the show and everything that was happening. So um, I've learned over time to allow her the space to kind of. Uh, feel what she feels and not try to change her experience. Mm -hmm. I think that's the main thing, you know, because uh, oftentimes, you know, we want to help so bad as men yeah. sometimes, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And it's really nothing that we could do. Yeah, yeah, we want to yeah. fix it, you know, like I, you know, you know, I'm praying about it and, and, and seeking God's advice on it. And I just think that, uh, you know, I'm at, a, I'm at a point where I'm like, you know, I'm leaning on a, a greater understanding than my own, you know, at mm -hmm. this point, uh, because, we 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 re we really want it. We really want it to happen, you know. So I just think that just supporting her, however, if she's feeling emotional, if she's feeling like she needs a little space and time to herself, we allow that to be. Whether she wants to be alone or whether whatever that might looks like, I think it's just allowing her the space to feel that, you know. Uh, 
uh, and just and just to be there with her, showing up at those doctor appointments, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, being with her, rubbing her stomach, you know, and mm-hmm. it's just those uh, affirmative moments. I think where 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 partners need to really come together. You know what I'm saying? So anytime time I see it, that she's struggling, it's important that I show up and just pour into her in any way that I can because maybe I can't do anything physically or internally, right? Yeah. But uh, I can't pour into her from a spiritual aspect, you know what I'm saying? And from a, just a supportive aspect and that from just, you know, allowing love to do what it do. So I think yeah. that's <laughs> an important point because like you said, as men, our first instinct, it seems, is to want to fix things, you mm-hmm. know, when we've been struggling to conceive, you know, my first instinct is to like dive into the research on fertility, mm-hmm. IVF, try to consume everything I can, come up with the strategy. How are we going to mm-hmm. improve the next time? And I think that is important, but even more important than that is tr- t- turning towards your partner and their emotions mm-hmm. and really, you know, as you said too, there is a time where. I mean, there's, you can't really change anything, but you can be there to support. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You, know, you can't yeah. just take away the pain that they feel mm-hmm. you right. know, uh, as much as you want it. And I found myself at times like struggling to find the comforting words to mm-hmm. say, yeah. you know, and, and, and racking my brain to think, what can I say that's going to take, take away this pain? Yeah. Sometimes you say nothing, man. You just cry. Yeah. Sometimes we just cry about it. Sometimes there's nothing to say. You know, sometimes it's just an emotional thing. Sometimes it's just a, uh, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's just a laying with each other, you know, mm-hmm. and talking about, you know, what it is that we want to create. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah. So something, you know, while you were on online and you posted about, you know, how you did a lot of shadow work mm-hmm. um, throughout your motherhood journey. That's literally what I was going to say. Oh, is that what oh, you yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so, <laughs> yes, and I just thought this was so powerful. Even when you posted on socials, I didn't tell you, but I cried. But, um, really, yeah, I did. Why? Don't, you, don't you do it because I'm starting no, now. Why? why I made you cry? Um, okay, well, let me read it first because okay. then that'll explain. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> she's sorry, like, oh, I'm I can't cry on this episode yet. <laughs> I actually, I should. I said I should cry. Should cry. Okay, <laughs> so, um, basically, you talk about all of the shadow work that you've done and how you know some women feel an emptiness if they struggle to conceive. But you said, and I quote, I funneled all of that loving, caring, nurturing energy that I seek to give my children to myself first and then to the women of the unruly retreat. So I thought that that was powerful because I remember that you posted a picture of yourself as a kid and you said, every time I think about having a child, I think about me as a child and I really pour into my child version of myself. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that was so powerful, that shift. So could we talk about that? Yeah. So I might, I feel like I'm, I might, this might be a controversial take, okay. but um, I am a very spiritual person and I'm, I, I, I do the work on myself. So mm-hmm. when I started having, I think it was like after my second miscarriage, I was like, okay, I want to do, I know that there's work we can do on the physical plane. I'm like, what can I do on the spiritual plane? Like what spiritual ties or spiritual karmic lessons are here for me? And I started to investigate why do I want to be a mother? Mm. Like I had to actually think about that. And I actually think it's a privilege. I, I, a, the fertility journey for me has also been a gift too, yeah. in many ways, because I had to ask myself a lot of hard questions. Mm-hmm. Like, do you just want a child because you want someone to love? Mm. Like, do you just want a child because you want another you? Why are all the, like, are all, and it's like, dang, a lot of the reasons why when people justify why we want to have children, it goes back to the self. And essentially what that means is that child is going to come here and you need something from them. And I'm like, well, you know what? If I enter motherhood, I want to enter from a clean slate Mm -hmm. as much as I can. I want to be able to just bring a child earthside and I don't need them to fulfill any holes in me. Mm -hmm. That to me would be creating a liberated child. That this child did not come here to serve me like in that sense. So. What I started to do was like a lot of inner child work and focusing on so like one of my spiritual healers, she was like, every every time you think about the longing of wanting a child and all the things we'll do together, revert it back to your inner child. And so I did. I mean, I play like like you said, we go see Lion King, yeah. right? Like, or I'll go uh, do something fun, whatever it is. I'll go outside. I'll go to the go park. To Disney, yeah. Go to Disney. Yeah. yeah, I'll go ride rides by myself. I love it. Rides. But feeling that funneling that energy that I'm so desperate to give away Mm. to myself. 
Mm. at the very least like to me that is the mm-hmm. best thing that i can do right now because with this whole fertility thing is a lot of unknown Man. there's a lot of things you can't control and it's like i just decided well no matter how this ends am i still gonna love myself wholly and completely am i still gonna create a life that i'm in love with am i still gonna create a legacy does a legacy only have to be through a child like what am i going to do without that And the more that I do that, the less I need a child to fulfill that for me. Mm -hmm. So when (laughs) my baby does come, whatever that looks like, Mm -hmm. I feel like I'll be entering motherhood in a much more free way Mm -hmm. as much as I can. Yeah, I think that. I hope I made Mm -hmm. that point right. Girl, yeah, I'm going to clap for you too because (laughs) that's so, I mean, and when you posted that, I got emotional because it was like an aha moment, like, I never even thought about it like that. So I know that that's going to heal a lot of women. Aww. Thank you for sharing it. Because. Yes. It's beautiful. If I hug you, I'm going to cry. So yeah. I'm <laughs> so you, you can cry, baby, if I you know, want to. I get, I get. She's like, I got my makeup. I know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I, you already touched on this, but are there any other myths or misconceptions about mm. fertility that you want to dispel? Because I think that's so important to dispel them because people have all these preconceived notions of like, it should just happen, right? When you want to have a baby, it should just happen. It, so many things like that. Is there something you want to speak on there? I don't know. It's, it's such a slippery slope because in the same uh, sense that uh, my wife has kind of been protecting herself, a woman can protect themselves for so long, you know, being on a birth control thing for so so many years, thinking that you're protecting yourself, but in, in, in some form of way that's kind of, um, it's not, it's, it's, it doesn't really serve your system mm-hmm. when you get older and you try to have children, yeah. you know? So I just think yeah. that uh, women gotta know that it's not just off of theirs, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a part of the conditioning, it's part of government, it's part of like, mm-hmm our relationship to these things. So I would say to women to not be discouraged. Um, That's that's the main thing that I would say is for women to not be discouraged, I think, um, because it's not by your own doing why some of these complications happen with your body Mm -hmm. is what I'm saying. Uh, But we feel as when we're certain ages that we need these things to kind of protect ourselves to, you know, for prevention reasons. And then when you get older, it's like, taking that out like you almost have to kind of retrain your body yeah. you know what I'm saying or like mm-hmm. uh, uh reestablish that relationship to that thing you see what I'm saying yeah. whether that's your ovaries whether whatever that might look like so I just think that um maybe not the biggest misconception but I just want uh women to just be more patient you know what I'm saying with themselves you know what I'm saying yeah it uh, takes time and it takes grace. time and have, yeah, have more grace that's that's it so yeah have more grace. grace about it so yeah. um because that's how i view it with her too of like I have grace honey like we kind of yeah. rewire some of those so things really. and stuff you know mm-hmm. so yeah. um yeah so i believe it happened yeah absolutely i Naturally. feel like I, I feel like i have a myth that i i wouldn't say that i am in a place to dispel it but i am investigating it in myself okay like this is something i want to dismantle i want to dismantle this thought that it's too late yes Mm. because i think that i'm a millennial and like millennial women were really set up for the okie doke because they told us from when we were little don't depend on anybody make sure you get your own always be independent go to college get an education don't have a bit put your don't put don't put a man before your like we were hammered the messaging was go to college, have something that you can stand on, Mm -hmm. and then think about a man and a baby. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us did that, and what that did was it made made us older, entering motherhood, or you know, like we started thinking about making a family later, and then I feel like we just got shamed on the back end. And we were like, wait a minute, but I thought this is what we were supposed to do. I thought it was uh, investing on myself. And so I feel like they, from your, when 35 and up, they're going to call you geriatric yeah. immediately. Mm-hmm. If, if, if any, I am over 35. If mm-hmm. I mention wanting a child, the first thing out of someone's mouth is like, oh, oh, right. Wow. Okay. Oh, okay. The doctors are going to be like, you know, you're running out of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, your AMH levels, you know, time. your eggs, like at every turn, it's like a fucking opposite. Sorry. Can I? No, yes, girl, okay. 
It's the fucking opposite of a fun house. Yeah. Right? Like, you know, you see the mirrors and you're like, ah, there it is. Ah, ah. It's just like, you owe, bitch, you owe, you owe, you owe. Like every turn. And so for me. Bitch, you owe. Yeah, they, bitch, they look keep me saying that. Oh, bitch, you owe. Yeah, wow. You want to, oh. Yeah. You know you can get a That's surrogate, bad. right? You know you can adopt. Right, right. You know you have other yeah. options. And then even our, we were talking about IVF. Like, they just push it on you, push it on And yeah. so I'm in this space. I spend a majority of my day talking to women, thinking about women, writing about how we are for our liberation. Mm -hmm. How can women reclaim all the lost power that society takes from us at every turn? This is the ultimate seat of that power in the sense for me in mm -hmm. my particular journey, mm -hmm. where if I can sit in my knowing, if I can sit that I can do this and trust in myself, I wonder who I'd be on the other side of that. Because right now, I feel like the messaging is getting to me a little bit with the like, well, maybe I need to do IVF. Maybe I need to do that. And we've already, I've already done surgeries. I've already been through so much mm -hmm. that I know me and you were talking. It's like sometimes you have to think how far do you want to push yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Because you want this baby, but I also care about myself. My yeah. mental health. I also care yeah, about me. what I'm going through. Yeah. Like, right? So I think if I could dismantle that thought within myself that it's too late. Right. You need to rush. Mm. You need to. That I think I would be in a much more free and like powerful, Absolutely. empowered position. Yeah, I think that's such an important myth to dispel. The thing that kind of gave me solace was the realization that if you're still ovulating, you're still fertile, right? I only need one egg. You only right. need you only <laughs> need you one only egg. Need if one. you're still ovulating, you're still fertile, and a lot of it, I think, is about addressing. You know, I mean, the body is such an intricate system, you know, putting it back into balance I, from everything that I've read, you know, whether it's from Eastern medicine, Western medicine, I think they all kind of come to that similar conclusion that it's just about addressing whatever imbalances might be going on in the body. But mm -hmm. if you're still ovulating, you there's you're, you're still fertile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know? there's other, you know, ways to motherhood. There are, right. but I'm just speaking on specifically yeah, conceiving. Yeah. So I, I think that's just so important because so many people have that notion that it is too late and they, mm -hmm. they give up and, and, you know, it's, you know, if you decide, if people decide to not continue that pursuit, that's totally fine. But if they want to keep going down that road, yeah, you know, I feel like they should know that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So switching yes, yeah. gears a little bit, um, you know, I follow you guys closely online and I've just seen how you have blended your family and it's so yeah. beautiful to watch. And I just see you guys cooking together. You got a cheerleader in the house. I see you working out with your children. So talk to me about that and how it feels to blend your family and, and become one. Oh man, amazing, amazing, yeah. right? It's like everything that I've dreamed of. Um, you know, you know what, what's, what is beautiful is that, like, even though we are in a process, right, of conceiving children, of mm -hmm. like, figuring that thing out, um, it's such a beauty to watch her in her motherly vibe, yeah. right? And still have that spirit and still be able to exercise mm -hmm. that and, and, and the nourishment and all of that that comes with. And uh, uh, I'm so really, really grateful for that, you know what I'm saying, of having that dynamic because I feel like God works in mysterious ways and I just feel like God does everything for a reason and I can just only imagine that this thing can possibly set up the next thing. You know, I know that's how God works. So just to put that aside, but having, um, you know, my daughter with me, man, and being able to pour into her, um, you know, cause my son is with his mother. Um, that's a different situation, but uh, yeah, I, I feel so grateful, you know, to be there hand in hand with her, uh, to be able to do all of the fun things, to be able to mm -hmm. uh, pray with her, teach her how to pray, to be able to just have fun with her, you know, um, it's just, I mean, it's so fulfilling, man. You know, I think, I think for me, it's really exciting to watch every step of the journey as she grows, like watching her confidence build, knowing that she's in cheerleading now and then watching her kind of now being in like flag football and expressing herself. So uh, oh, it's it's just, oh, yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. so, okay. we, awesome. so we, we, told, we told them, man, is that like, you know, we're gonna allow you guys to express the fullness of yourselves. Yes. Like it's a part of why we did the work that we did, mm -hmm. we do, you know what I'm saying? So she can come and be as full as the full person, yes. having great sleeve, that means great food, that means great community, great people around you, right? And put in these great spaces and ultimately a part of a successful system. So you're set up for success in the, in the, in the in the real world, you know? So, and that's that's like, a, and to me, you have to almost build a winning system, you know what I'm saying? Or create a winning system. So 
uh, that's what it is for the kids. So I just think, man, her creating the scheduling and uh, putting together the meals and what are we thinking about the meals and watching things and having dialogue about it. Like mm -hmm. it's it's been uh, so fulfilling as a father, man. And it's so crazy because sometimes you might think that you would never know you get so much power from these things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. we like nice things, but yeah. it's like those little things of just playing around my door to a, a chest bump in there or something like that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and we all, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She's, aggressive. She's, She's aggressive. Yeah, yeah, She's aggressive. Yeah, yeah. She's aggressive, She's man. Trying to run him down. You know what I'm saying? Man. But it, it, it's like it's uh, it's it's powerful, man. And I just think like to me when I when I'm in those moments, I'm like, this is what life is about. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I got dreams, I got aspirations, but like this is what it's yeah, about. This is why I work so hard. You know. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's crazy how when we're younger, you know, we think of the cars and that yeah. the big house right. and all the uh -huh. all this stuff. But then when we get older, it's like, oh, like playing with the dogs, playing with the kids. Literally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's almost you like know? I feel yeah. like your view gets more smaller and focused. I feel yeah. like when I was younger, I would just think big picture, yeah. big house. Uh, marriage, uh, this, a big thing, but you don't think about like the emotional experience of that thing or what the day-to-day -day yeah. life would be like. Yeah. Now I think very, like small things make me so happy. Yes. Love that for me. I don't know what <laughs> started happening, but I love it. And I would say this, I come from a blended family mm -hmm. and I am now, I have converted to a bonus dad. Okay. Instead of so we we I use the term bonus because it's like okay I chose him and bonus yes. I got two bonus kids <laughs> love them down um, but uh, I was a stepmom now I'm a bonus mom I love that. I mean I was a bonus mom now I'm a bonus dad okay I oh. shifted oh, to yeah, a bonus yeah. dad okay. that, so what that, that means yeah, is yeah. <laughs> those are his children <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's the primary caretaker yeah. and all of the mm -hmm. ways we uh, socialize women to be all the scheduling doing the things yeah. that's pretty much his job so he signs <laughs> her up for flag or he yeah. signs her up for cheer you know he does this thing and then I come in as a bonus dad and I, I do fun things well I like cooking I like planning my meals so I do yeah. that but like I get to do the fun stuff like I get to just sailor you want to go do this you want to do that oh, okay. and like okay. play with her but yeah, really yeah, what yeah. it means at the bottom line is that i like really just support him like yeah, he's the yeah. primary parent and i am his support role and i feel like what a lot of women are socialized in and or comes naturally mm -hmm. is to be that primary role mm -hmm. to take up everything and i did that in the past and i feel like i'm at such a more healthier place now i can enjoy it so much where i can support him being the best dad he can be yeah. and not for nothing i have the best bonus children ever yeah. like yeah. they're just good people like yeah. even though they're yeah. young i see them as yeah. full human beings and i just feel like they're super dope i love being around them i love watching their brains develop mm -hmm. i love learning new things about them i love seeing who they be you know who they're going to choose to be and stuff like that and it's just i don't know to me they make life better for me yeah. Love that. I mean, look at the house that they're growing up in. I mean, yeah. how can you not be amazing? <laughs> they spoiled, you both man. are amazing. They are spoiled. spoiled. They, yeah. they need a little sides. bit of spoiled. They have so much yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little bit. Just um, a little bit. Got to, bro. We yeah. talked about the kids. We talked about the family. Let's talk about you all's yes. relationship. Let's hit it. Yeah. Okay. Because, you know, you still got to keep it spicy. Y'all been married mm -hmm. for a few years. Right. You know, you sit, right. Juggling a whole lot of things. Just how many years has it been now? Almost five, bro. Next year will be five years, bro. That's awesome. Got married in 2020, so yeah. So how do you keep it interesting? How do you keep it spicy? Ooh. What do your day nights look like? Mm. Oh, we got different. Uh, 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 what can we share? What can we share? Uh, well, let me try to keep it blushing. <laughs> you know, right, right. Right. Hey, whatever you feel comfortable with. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think the thing that is cool about him is he is like a sponge okay. like you know the way kids like you know like a baby what's so fun about a baby is like they do something new all the time you, they couldn't <laughs> they couldn't walk before and they're like oh my god like they're doing something new oh my god <laughs> like he's like that as an adult like he's so open-minded so one day i never know what book he's gonna be reading y'all awesome. mm -hmm. one day i never know if i'm gonna I'm a come home and he's Keep outside standing with bare feet in the yard what you doing i'm grounding okay <laughs> Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I never know yeah. what, like, I love seeing, yeah. I don't know who he's going to be. Yeah, so yeah. I feel like that keeps it new for me because then I'll be having to ask him, like, oh, shoot, is this a new version of Ace right here? Yeah. Is this a new version? Let me know. Fill me in. Yeah. What's the tea on him? So I know how to communicate with him. That. And I feel like some people would find that frustrating, but I love it because I like yeah. novelty. And so yeah. it's just like he's always the same at his core, but it's almost like he just finds, like, new ways of, being himself and stuff like that. So I think that's fun. That's such yeah, a that's healthy so, 
way to look at that. Really? Y'all so you. just yeah. mature and, I know. and like emotionally intelligent and in tune. Yeah. Like goals. goals. And what you said about the novelty, I think that's so important. Right. Like you have to have mm -hmm. novelty in the relationship. Keep doing new things, new experiences. Mm -hmm. And even like you were saying, being a new person, like keeping your mind growing, that inspires your partner too. I mean, your partner is your environment or a big part of your environment. Right. Yes, so huge. just by working on yourself in, in terms of like that growing, you're introducing new things to your partner's environment. Mm -hmm. Did you answer about the date night? Yeah. Oh, the date night. You know what? I, we we kind of both act in that way too. Like uh, I think our relationship is so dope is because of the change, right? Mm -hmm. It's because she can walk up and be like, I want to be in this area. <laughs> or I want to be this. Or you know what? I'm feeling like I want to be that. You know what I'm saying? Whatever that might look like. Sometimes she might pop it on me and say, I want to be that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I mean, but but date night, man, for us, uh, it always is. I feel like, a, you know, whether it's dialogue or whether we like watching a show or whether we like go out and grab something to eat. You know what I'm saying? That's what uh, I was going to say. But really, really, sometimes <laughs> those, uh, those exciting things kind of pop up in like the miscellaneous things that we do. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it would be like the... I don't put something together, and now she's looking at me a certain way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't. I don't put this little set together, or whatever. I don't. Or or, or, or or I'm just handling my business as a dad, as a man. Like yes. you know what I'm saying? I don't cut the grass. I don't make sure everything. Man. Like it's just little things like that too <laughs> that keeps it spicy. That like she'll pull up on me. She be like, oh, "I see you. That's how you feel." So that banter yes. back and forth. I love that. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Talk to me crazy sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> yeah. spicy, no real oh, talk. You know what I'm saying? Show. Like you know, uh, in, in, that, in that spontaneousness. I'm like, I'm yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. So you know, yeah. pull up on and give a little smack, you know, give yeah. a little love. Like hey. you got all of that, man. I to me, it. just keeps it like exciting because uh, we're different versions at every time. Like this particular season, like right, right. I'm in dad mode, and husband mode. I'm handling different things, right? Uh, you know, washing dishes, doing this and that, like queen cooking and handling things, and we dropping off the practice, like you know what I'm saying. Can so I it's move like. In with like, like, yes, it sounds you know, so nice. yes, yeah. so nice. it's, a, it's a it's a full <laughs> float. Don't, don't play because I, will I have play. a guest room that's made for I'm no there, guests, yeah. But, you can come. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. Amazing. but I feel like, in terms of date night, definitely our favorite thing, correct me if I'm wrong, but we love a good movie or a good show. Oh, like, yeah. if it's if we have a, a theater in our house, so if it's at home mm -hmm. or if we're going, and I love food, yeah, so it's mm -hmm. gonna involve eating mm -hmm. and watching something, and then after we talk about it. Ooh, what oh, what are y'all yeah. watching right what now? What's your go-to? Oh my God, that cr that um, show crazy. The what's uh, it called with the Mende Menendez brothers? The Menendez brothers. Oh, is that uh -huh. like a docu oh, docu docu series? Oh, okay. uh -huh. Ryan Damn. Murphy, yeah. I think. Yeah, he yeah did. docu series. Oh, that's he did American oh, Horror fire. Story, and then he also did the Dahmer series. Oh, yeah. So it's wow. basically part two of the Dahmer series yeah. where okay. they're covering like real life murders. Wow. But uh, I vaguely Queen love the murder mysteries. I was about she to loves, say, Sheila, she I know you study. We have that in common because yeah. the film. I do. I do. That's, I just that's our thing. So, so yeah. what is it? Because I, I, don't, I don't exactly get it. What is it about <laughs> it that you love about watching I don't those? know. Okay. Literally, like, when I'm like, oh, in my most comfortable, cozy, like in my bed, <laughs> and I got lit her body, like, and it's seven like, different and then days. she murdered her husband <laughs> yeah. seven times, like, Eating and I just like, yeah. I don't know why, like, yeah. you know, I heard some, I re, I, re, I reject this, <laughs> right, I, I reject this, yeah, but I heard yeah. a therapist online, and she was like, it's actually your like trauma bond, not trauma bonding with the show, but oh. you're relating to your nervous system feels comfortable watching that because you're used to a heightened experience. Wow, so oh. she clock me so i don't know yeah, if, like, if it could be that dangerous. but right i don't know but me i like a i love a true crime like not even crime but i love a story that's recreated from fact okay. and then mm. going to again for me it's like for, the, the show is like foreplay to me like the act is actually mm -hmm. after i will go research and see like how close did they get it to real life look up or all the stuff. What was original the stuff. are there easter eggs stuff like that so mm -hmm. that that's what i like it but okay. why i like serial killer stuff i don't know <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible i really don't it doesn't make sense to yeah. me but just, some people say so that they know what to do in the future they want oh. to look out uh, <laughs> i mean that I can only know. go so far <laughs> you know <laughs> You can't, like, if they're behind a corner and they jump out, what are you going to do? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. And that's the thing. It only makes her, 
<laughs> hey, it only makes her a little bit more like jittery Bro, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and that's like, what I they, like so uh, now when I'm coming through the back or whatever, or coming right. out, you know what I'm yeah. saying? From vibing oh, or the door closing out. too much. Hey, dude. Oh, like, oh shit. Wrong? You know what I'm saying? Now she yeah, because I'm watching like, them damn murder, murder mystery right. pictures, man. You need to cheer. Well, Lauren's like really into like the horror movies and all that sort of stuff. And I, I, maybe it has something to do with like this, that heightened nervous system yeah, activity. Know, maybe maybe she's on something. She <laughs> yeah. Wait, what's your favorite horror movie? Oh, I like the old Michael Myers back in the day. See, Ooh, I like the old see. slashers. Kim's like, slashers. how do you watch oh, people Oh, see, I don't like killed? slashers. I'm like, it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's funny. Like the old slashers. The ones now are, are too, too much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah. Like scream type yeah, of vibe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's funny because they run and it just looks comical to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, you got me watching those old slashers, but... Oh, and Halloween. off camera, we got to talk about, um, what's the one that just came out with the, the possessed? Uh, oh, uh, D Deliverance. Yes. Oh, oh dude, I think you did an Instagram video. On yeah. That. But real quick. Okay. <laughs> last question. <laughs> it's great. Emily. You're not hey, folks, what was that, girl? That was <laughs> terrible. No, the actor, the actor slid. They did so good. They, the actors were amazing. Andre Day, but amazing. Ooh, All the actors. Some of that script. Okay. Last question. Okay. So what's one thing that the world doesn't know about your relationship that will probably surprise people? Something fun or unexpected? Oh, that we met on Instagram. Oh, oh okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, Wait, a yeah, minute. Wait a minute. I thought I you told me this whole story about you met at like this club. and Right, no, but I that DM'd was after. him to get there. Yeah, yeah. that was after. Oh, <laughs> it was a whole okay. process to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, DM'd okay. him tell, us, tell us real quick about this DM slide. Yeah, to my yeah. best friend, Chantrell. <laughs> yeah, but so she she was coming. It was, it, he was in, uh, what's it called? New York. New York. For All-Star Weekend. I lived in New York at the time. Mm -hmm. It was Valentine's Day weekend too. We met oh, on Valentine's oh, Day. Man. And so. It's romantical. My friend was up there for <laughs> friends. We were like, what is it called when you celebrate with your girlfriend? Is the name? Uh, Friendsgiving. Galentine. Galentine's Day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We were doing Galentine's. Mm -hmm. We were getting our nails done. We were getting massages. And she, and she was like, oh my God, like we should go out tonight. Everybody's here. It's All Star. Isn't Ace Hood, that's the one who be writing hearts on your pictures? And I'm like, I'm not going to DM You was writing hearts on her pictures? <laughs> yeah, I was. I was guilty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was like, uh, no. You shout out just... to the friend. Yeah, yeah. shout out to Shan. <laughs> right. yeah. She was also the maid of honor. And so I was like, okay, you know, I'm not going to write him because he's going to think I'm a groupie. I'm not on that. You know, she was like, girl, just do it. So I wrote him and he wrote back and he was in the city. And we just ended up going to that club. And that was it. I saw him at Damn. the club. Wow. And I was like, oh my God. What made her stand out? Oh man. Um, at that which moment? Because oh, well, on uh, Instagram, you gotta be specific. Up. First connected, <laughs> right? Well, the, the connection was, was, it was very playful. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I think that was beautiful <laughs> because it's like, it's kind of like, you know when like you're doing the thing and it's like only you two know about that thing. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So I felt like we were sending each other like little subliminals, That's but only we, we we only knew about it. Yeah. So you know back then, as opposed to seeing a DM right away, I'm the type of guy, right? So I'm like, <laughs> all right, I might write on a picture that's like two, three weeks or like a that's month old, oh, oh, right? right? Like you feel me like, back then? Oh, so yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you know, like, we was going back. Yeah, yeah, subtle strategy. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. So I'm going back, you know what I'm saying? I'm looking at all the pictures. Your hair was straight, your hair was curly, your blah, 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 this and that. This video, laughter. So I'm just putting oh little, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm showing her that I'm interested. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I, I really, so for me, at that first moment, it was her vulnerability that I was so attracted to. Mm -hmm. Was the fact that I thought it was just, I don't know, I thought it was like otherworldly that she was able to be so open and authentic on a social site like that. Mm -hmm. Like, and not feel any yeah. shame. Cause for me, I was like, why well, I'd be feeling shame? Why well, I'd be feeling like, you know? Mm -hmm. But she was just, I don't know, I seen her heart in that moment for me. Um, and I just think that when we when we got to New York, it was like, all right, we're gonna meet up with one another. For some reason, I was just really excited about this mm -hmm. because I also knew that, <laughs> Cause I feel like I kind of planned my life. I feel like I manifested everything in my life, honestly. You, you know what I'm saying? That like too. that's you just knew she was gonna be all, all my all parts. That. So I already knew. So I knew at this particular time in my life the type of woman that I knew that I what I wanted and mm -hmm. I wouldn't knew what I was gonna call for. So I was really invested at that time. So you know, went to a party and then when I seen her, um, you know, for me it was just her smile and I just think her being her. She was very different than everything else I had been introduced to it, to in the game. And I just felt like she. This is. There's like she's just very valuable, like yeah. as a person, you know. So I just think it's so interesting, like that scene metaphorically of like being in the world to actually part in 
my environment that I was in to allowing her to come in mm. and like give her a big hug. So, um, I, I also, yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no, go ahead. But I feel like I also <laughs> knew that it was like, okay, this is this is going somewhere when you would, you would do voice backs. Voice That's when it got, yeah, yeah, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I was oh, boy. this last night. Because, That's ahead. what I mean about the fun part, too, is because that same energy of, like, uh, she knows, you know, we the thing that we kind of know between each other of like writing on each other's pictures. That's when we started sending funny voice notes to one another, uh, and I think yeah. that's when I really knew like she was it's the like, one. Oh, he has a playful yeah, side. yeah. We used to have real, and to me, I couldn't always express that side yeah. of myself. So I just think that I'm talking about me, he would be doing mm-hmm. accents and stuff. <laughs> accents, like, yeah. Well, you know, what like type of accents. Yeah. <laughs> but I'd be like, the, what was the first one where we was doing? I was like, what is it? I gotta shoot your head off on a Tuesday? Yeah, I don't know, brother. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Don't I mean, looky here, man. Like, We're I here. Come over here and I hey, give hey, you I miss to worry you. About, okay? Hey, I would love to see you. I was right? Like, hey, guys. <laughs> yeah. Hey. And you yeah, were just yeah, sending yeah. me. We yeah. were just random. I don't even yeah. know where we got there. <laughs> you were comfortable enough yeah. to be yourself immediately. Yeah. He was on the yeah. back of that yeah. voice child trying to make them voice go. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I was like, this is funny. I never yeah. would have expected that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that. Oh, my so, God. Y'all are, beautiful. like, the most beautiful couple inside out. Thank, Thank you, you for man. blessing us with this. How can yeah. you say that Thank when y'all, y'all sitting right there? Right. Oh, man, look, right. we're focusing on y'all. Yeah, y'all just glow. Yeah, like, it's amazing. We so we have y'all, a man. quick game. Should we do this real quick? Sure. Let's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it's rapid fire. <laughs> no, I knew it. I said that in the car. Yeah, I yeah. said, well, on the way here, I was like, Oh my God! What if they do one of the things you gotta answer real fast? Yeah, 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 <laughs> I yeah, said, yeah. Babe, what's your favorite food? I think you made it. Right, right, right. Food? <laughs> I yeah. manifested it. You gotta, yeah, yeah, yeah. See what I'm saying? <laughs> See? Yeah. Come on. yeah. Okay. Rapid fire. First thing that comes to your mind. Okay. Now we call this love seat confession. Wait, we both answer. Or you just pick a person. Um, whoever answers first. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not gonna trip you up. Okay. Yeah. Pressure, <laughs> pressure, pressure's on. Yeah. Okay. Pressure. What's one thing on your bucket list to do as a couple? Ooh. Go to Tokyo? Mm. Yes. Ooh. Go to Tokyo. Can we make that a group trip? Uh, yeah, it's a group trip. Really? Yes. Group trip. Yeah, yeah. In Africa. Ooh. Yeah. Where, Africa. Where in Africa? Where? Africa. We've been, uh... Uh, Nigeria. Okay. Um, yeah. Ghana. Ghana. Oh. Ghana for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, Tanzania. Tanzania. Yeah. Be really nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, like a nice a nice African little yes. tour. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You love that. Yeah. Uh, next question is, what's one thing you do that drives the other person crazy? What do you do that drives Ace crazy? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you already what? know. Wait, Ace's face was like, mm-hmm. uh, what do I want to share? Say it. <laughs> Say this is rapid my, fire. Mine is, for her, it's like, for her, she think, <laughs> when I, if I act like I don't know something. Mm. Oh, okay. That's her. Why you act you, like you don't? You do be doing yeah. that though. She think it's purposeful, Bro. but I'll be like, huh? What you said? Like you, I really don't know. <laughs> right, right. Like what you talking? About? I, I really don't be knowing sometimes. <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying. I mean, How you get mad? He don't know, Sheila. Cause he be playing like he don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he do know. <laughs> okay, okay, what's yours? My mine. Wait, that's is, one thing. You get look, in. I got a sponge mommy. You know the sponge mommy? What's that? No. What's it's that? like a little sponge. Are, anybody know? Probably it's like a little sponge, and it has like a. Like a eyes and a, oh, and a smile. Oh, I've seen that. Like, <laughs> where are you right? Going? I yeah, like where is this going? my sponge mommies to be fresh, right? Okay. So I bought a little holder for my sponge mommy uh-huh. on the sink. It's like a little yeah. suction cup thing. So when you're done washing the dishes, you just put her on the little holder. Yep. Mm-hmm. But he somehow don't never want to put her on the holder. Mm. He also oh. put her on the counter, and then I can yeah, relate. This question was what. What do you do that drives him crazy, though? Oh, yeah. well, what I do, uh, <laughs> yeah. it is funny because I'm. this is how I'm a big-ass hypocrite. <laughs> I know what I do. One of the things that I do is um, I he he, he wash a dish immediately. Mm. Like, he'll use it. Like, Wait, he doesn't, you mad that he wash a dish? I know. I said I'm a hypocrite. I'm accepting myself only and completely. Right, right. <laughs> but you didn't put the sponge back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I know I'm wrong. I know I am. I, wrong, I know. I know. I can be. It's a learning. Story. But, you know, I just feel <laughs> like if I'm working from home and I make myself a little salad in a bowl, like, and I know that I'm, I, I if I made a little salad for just Sheila, right? I just mm-hmm. used a few dishes, boom. Mm-hmm. And I know that I'm going to cook dinner later. I will leave the dish until I know I'm going to cook. Because when uh, I cook, I clean the whole, I wash everything before I even start. Mm-hmm. Because I cannot start cooking until the kitchen is absolutely clean. Mm-hmm. And then I clean while I cook, right? So, boom. I'm like, if the dish is sitting in the sink for a book about five hours, it's not a big deal. But he'll be like, Ma, Ma. Why is the dishes here? And I'm just like, I just think it's okay. I'm I'm with you on that. Ace. I ain't yeah. gonna lie. See, okay, that, I don't right? I don't like one thing that I don't like yeah. is like leaving something to soak. I hate that. Man. <laughs> 
Like, but sometimes bro. the thing that I can't. That's what I don't like right there. Yeah. When you leave them to soak and it's a bunch of them, yeah. and now the water's dirty now. Yeah. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's that Cause part because I'm like, it's, you, things don't need to I'm soak. They don't need to soak. <laughs> no. Yes, they do. No. 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 Just need okay. To put some more you gotta let everything <laughs> penetrate, and then rinse it off. That's the question before we start an argument up in here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, this one's kind of personal. Feel free to pass. Okay. okay. <laughs> so where's the wildest place that you ever, you know, wink? Wildest place. Uh, maybe <laughs> outside in the jungle. Oh, oh yeah, well, that's damn. probably the wildest outside, place. Yeah, that's the wildest place. Literally, literally. the wildest place. Outside in the jungle, because what we were... Uh, you know, private oh, villa, yon, no. and so we outside. <laughs> so the shower was outside in the jungle. Okay. So you know what I'm saying. We wanted to explore we some things. To just you know see the That's giving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I love yeah. it. Yeah, that's love awesome. It. That's awesome. <laughs> um, what's your? We kind of already talked on this. What's your guilty pleasure TV show? Um, other than that, our, our, our other guilty pleasure was then we. Oh, Love Is Blind. Oh. Oh, love is love blind. Is blind. Yeah. yeah, just saying that. Yeah, no, because no, nah, real talk. No, because we were just watching the. You would not think he would be into Love Is Blind, yeah. and at first I was like, he's yeah, like not gonna enough. be into it, and yeah. then I started showing. Him, I said, no, no, no. I promise you, this was interesting. <laughs> not even your season. He's never even seen your season. Oh, really? oh I had to tell him in general. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Like even <laughs> I even got Sailor watching it with us. Like real, I'm like, yeah. bro. She's like, oh, that guy's not real. I'm like, I know he's fake. He's not really in love with her. Yeah. But like, I just feel like it's a guilty pleasure because I feel like on this. On the spectrum of reality TV, I feel like Love and Blind is on the top tier to me. It's really tenor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely mm -hmm. pulls you in. It makes you want to yell at the TV. I, and I like <laughs> yelling at the TV. <laughs> yes. Give me something I can yell at the TV. Yeah. No, not her. No, I mean. bitch lying. <laughs> okay, last last question. Okay, so what's the most embarrassing thing that's happened to you as a couple? <laughs> oh my gosh. That's a big question. Did I block anything out like this? I gotta go back <laughs> in my memory happened? file and cabinets. <laughs> This happens to us as a couple. Maybe nothing. That's a, yeah, that's kind of a tough question. That so is. I'm like to yeah, think I'm really trying to think. Um, that's good. If nothing. Well, I mean, that one time I did trip and fall. We were in um, with the with the Tennessee. Where were we? Where were we in Tennessee with the cabin? And I tripped in slow motion. Oh no! And then the kids <laughs> was making fun of me. Junior was making reenacting it the whole night. Oh no! It was funny. He was hilarious. Junior was so funny. <laughs> but. I, I don't know what it is. I'm just clumsy. And I we were we were okay. about to go like to Smoky Mountains or something. Mm -hmm. And we were like, oh, let's just get some pictures first. And we were there with like another family and everything. And I just <laughs> felt, but it was like a, it was like a three part fall. Was it oh, just man. like, I oh, seen the fall, did I? yes, you were there. <laughs> Every, they were all laughing. See, he don't even remember. Because <laughs> people came, right. are you oh, okay? Yeah. Cause I felt like, and then it was like the stair. And then I rolled <laughs> over, like I ended up like on my back. Sheila, I remember you falling a few times and some of you. <laughs> somebody said something there was somebody DM me. People will diagnose you. Somebody's like, Sheila, you might be autistic. Oh. No. Yeah, they was like, oh, you What's might be out to do with falling. I don't know. That's what somebody said. They were trying no, to diagnose me. I don't Come know. Come on. Even, no. I'm anyway. just clumsy. <laughs> well, thank you. No, yeah. That's a good <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much. This was such a beautiful conversation. We had laughs, almost cried. Talked about everything under the sun. God bless you both. And You're you such too. a blessing yeah, to us too. and everyone who's listening yeah. to this conversation. Thank you for joining us on the love. Thank you for yeah, having appreciate us. Appreciate you love guys. You down. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. <laughs> that conversation was amazing. I really love how Ace he represented for the men and Sheila represented for the women. What a beautiful couple. Yeah. Yeah. Excited to see them again soon now for all of our listeners we want to hear what you have to say we want to hear what you're going through specifically so send us a voice memo to official love seat podcast at gmail.com or on our instagram official love seat podcast be sure to like subscribe review rate all that good stuff on this video or if you're listening on audio because we want to hear what you have to say until next time see you on the love seat